Today on Mr. Teslonian, we're going to 3D print a brand new vertical wind turbine design that I just got done modeling up. You can see the model here on the screen. This is something that I just designed on Tinkercad. We're going to go ahead and pull this whole model apart, send it over to the Creality K1C, print all these parts out today and give it a preliminary test run just to see how well the design actually works. This new vertical wind turbine design could potentially remove the need to have a large tower holding up your horizontal wind turbine and still use the exact same turbine diameter that we use already today and a lot of the same blade patterns and all that. Let me go ahead and change the angle for you a little bit so you can see what we've got going on here. Instead of having just a pole for a tower, this design has a set of concentric rings and each one of the rings gets a little wider than the next. The very bottom ring that you're looking at right here, as you can tell, any air that's going to come into this design is going to reflect off of these walls and be directed directly up through the center of the column here. That will help focus all that air directly up towards our wind turbine which sits up at the top. This next ring up is just a little expanded out from the bottom ring. Once again the air is going to come in, reflect off of these walls and be directed upwards through the column. And once again on the next ring here the same thing is going to happen. We're going to have air coming into the system being deflected off of these walls and then directed upwards through the column. And that same thing is going to happen all the way up into this blade right here at the very top. Now the top ring itself is just basically a confining ring, helps confine all the air flows that we've just directed up through our column directly into the blades of the turbine, which you can see right here at the very top. You can see our five blade pattern here of the turbine that's going to rest right on top of a central drive shaft that will allow us to direct all the air flow up through this device and directly into this wind turbine blades. Now I apologize if you hear some fans kicking on and off in the background. I'm in our power production room here at the 3D print farm. I've got 100 3D printers running on solar power and wind generators and hydroelectric. And right now in this room I've got uh, seven 5,000 watt true sine wave inverters going and I've got about 15 charge controllers in here for our battery bank and they're going to be kicking on and off as I'm talking so I do apologize for any noise you keep hearing in the background. So let's get back to this real quick here. So from this angle you can definitely see the concentric rings pretty well. Let's go ahead and change over our model so you can see this a little bit better. I've got a model right here that doesn't have the wind turbine and the central tower in there. And if we pull this into the middle of the shot and then zoom back in on that, you should be able to see the concentric ring design a lot better. So there you go, that's a decent angle to show you what we've got going on here. This down here is the very first ring. You can see the lip right there coming up. You can see our next ring here. If we go directly over it, you can see how nice each one of those kind of align with each other. So all the air coming off the very bottom deflector plate is going to come up from right there. Our next plate is going to deflect all that air up through this column hole right here. And once again, the same thing through this column hole right there. And then up and up all the way through until it gets into the confining ring up here at the very, very top. Which will help direct all that air directly into the turbine, like I said. Pretty simple design. Go ahead and change the angle so you can see that. Not a lot was needed to actually build this. We just have some notches out here in the side of each one of the deflector rings. That will help hold these uh, little vertical column pieces that you see right here on the side. These little blades right here will help interlock each one of the deflector plates together at a certain distance. Help support the top retaining ring that will help funnel all that air through the blade. You can see some holes right here in our top retaining collar. Those will hold the, let me go ahead and change this out for you so you can see what we've got going on. Those holes right there hold these little rods that you can see right here. Those rods will help support the central shaft. Let's go ahead and undo this model just a little bit so you can see what we've got going on in there. We'll take that apart a little bit and we'll remove the actual turbine blades themselves out of it. And now you can see what we've got going on here. We have a central tower that comes out of a hole from our bottom deflector plate coming up and then we have four crossbars that go across and go into the confining ring up here at the top and that will help stabilize the main central support tower that supports the wind turbine itself or any generator head that we end up putting on this design later on once we build it a little bit bigger. I'll go ahead now and start disassembling this entire design. I'll break it down to individual pieces. I'll send this over to the Creality K1C 3D printer and we're going to 3D print this whole thing out here today. Once I get it 3D printed, I'll assemble all the parts, show you what it looks like complete, and then we'll bring it outside and hopefully we'll have some wind today. We'll be able to see just how well this new vertical wind turbine design actually works. 
So I've opened up the Creality Slicer. We're going to start slicing up the vertical wind turbine project, get it over to the printer. Let's go ahead and start out with the very first uh, deflector plate. This is the bottom plate right here. You can see the central hole for the support column that holds the actual turbine. Let's start out with that. We'll go over here to our material. We'll select down here. Let's see, where is it going to be? Uh, do, 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 do. Somewhere in here, we've got Creality's PETG. Let me make sure I can find it. Okay, there we go. We're going to use PETG for each one of these blades. Let's go down and change some of our parameters. Instead of two outside wall parameters, we're going to go ahead and go three outside wall parameters. We'll go down to the infill. We're going to change that up from 15%. Let's go ahead and do 70% infill on that. That should be basically all we're going to need to slice this up. We'll go over here, we'll hit slice. That'll take just a second, so I'll edit some of this out. Alright, so we should be getting pretty close here to the slicer being done. Let's see how long this is going to take and how much material it's actually going to need. Alright, so we're done slicing. It's going to take 3 hours and 13 minutes and take 79 grams of material to build this. That sounds fine to me. Let's go ahead and go to export to local. Come down here, vertical wind base, we're going to go ahead and write at the end of that, PETG, just so we know what it was sliced with. We're going to hit save, and there we go guys, we've now got our very first layer ready to go. Let me send this over to the Creality K1C, we'll start printing out our parts. Alright, so we're at the Creality K1C, which we're going to use to print this entire project. We're going to go ahead and go down here, let's go to the files, USB drive, and we've got uh, wind vanes here, so vertical wind blades. We'll go ahead and get rid of the calibration since it's already leveled. There we go, we've got that ready to go, and now the print's going. I'll show you guys what this looks like when it gets done. Okay, so we've finished printing all the parts that we're going to need for this vertical wind turbine test project on the Creality K1C. You can see all the concentric rings right here that we've got ready to go. I've got them stacked on top of each other kind of see the gap between each one of the rings. We've got our center rod that's going to go down into the hole here and hold the turbine on top of it. We've got the four outside linkers that hold all these uh, spaced apart from each other. We've got the stabilization rods that hold the center rod directly in the center. We've got our five wind generator blades. We've got a center turbine hub that's going to hold all those blades. We've got a little insert that's going to go into the top of this right there. And we've got a little drive rod that's going to go down through the center of the hub and spin inside that insert so we can get this thing to rotate. So let me go ahead now, we'll start assembling this and I'll show you what it looks like all assembled and we'll get it out and get it tested. I've completed assembling our vertical wind turbine. I just want to show you guys a couple things. First of all, the blade spins really, really nice, nice and easy. Here's the other thing I've noticed. Let me go ahead and get down where I can actually blow into it here. Give you guys a good view of the blades. <gasps> So there you go, it actually works by me just blowing into the central area right here. I'm quite a ways away, about a foot away from it. Blowing directly into the deflector blades. It actually makes the blades move up here at the top of the turbine. In fact, after blowing into it and seeing how well it works, I'm pretty sure this design is going to actually function pretty well with low wind velocities. So I can't wait to get this outside once we get some wind blowing and give it a really good test. Here we go with our vertical wind turbine test. I've just set it down, we've got some gusty winds. They're stopping in between and then gusting back up, so give us an idea of how well it's going to work. The neat thing about this vertical wind turbine design is that it doesn't need a wind vane to constantly correct itself into the wind. It should equally take advantage of all wind directions just because of the design itself. Look how well it's actually working there. It's spinning pretty good, and that's a pretty lightweight wind that we've got right now, probably only about 5 miles an hour. I like to see a gust up to 10, maybe 15 in between here so we can get a good idea of how fast it'll spin. But right there you can see that it's actually working pretty well even with a lightweight wind like this or a low speed wind. There we go, we got a little bit of a gust. Look at that guys, the vertical wind turbine design does function. In fact, it looks like it functions pretty well. The neat thing about it is, not needing a wind vane to constantly correct itself under the wind removes one moving part in the design that you would typically have. It takes advantage of all different wind directions pretty much equally. Look how nice that's spinning. 
Sorry for any getting in the microphone. Look at that thing just hung all the way. That's awesome. something that does take advantage of wind coming from multiple different directions, especially if you've got varying wind speeds and varying wind directions, this can actually harness those